I'm working on a best of the year list right now, but I wanted to hold you over with a bit more content <sighs> by making a review of two movies that I like. That was me stretching. I also wanted to talk about two films I, I saw this year that I really, really liked. I talk about bad movies, but I talk about good movies pretty well, I think. The first movie I want to talk about is The Northman, directed by Robert Eggers. This is probably my favorite film of the year. Gorgeous movie that's subtle, great music, action, and performances all across the board. Alexander Skarsgård, he gave a really awesome performance. I liked how all the characters in this movie are completely unrelatable to a modern day audience. I think that's one of the appeals of Robert Eggers films and his style. I really like that about the film and Clay's bang as well as Fulnir, the, the bad guy technically. I thought his performance was really great and he is definitely one of the most underrated performances of this year. The movie looks amazing, has really excellent sound, a really great score. The action scenes are fucking awesome and violent and really bloody. The revenge story just doesn't fall into a lot of the pitfalls that these stories can fall into that make them predictable or cliche or just kind of boring. The characters and their relationships were always interesting and dynamic and changing. Like the dynamic with Nicole Kidman's character, which I don't want to spoil. The main character is not such a clear-cut hero. You know, he's responsible for murdering innocent people and he's a viking at some point he steals the action and the violence in this movie is brutal and to achieve like what he wants to do he has to be a very cruel person and that's like interesting to watch i think every character had clear motivations and it was always very clear what was going on in the story the characters are also guided by spiritual forces valhalla is integrated into the story and i think they really worked that in very well whether the imagery is figurative or hallucination brought on by the main character, there's a lot of like metaphorical visual things that are going on. His spiritual journey was just as interesting as the physical violence and the action. To me, it felt so connected that it doesn't really matter if the imagery of Valhalla or whatever is supposed to be taken literally, but more so it's how the character views his own journey and how he sees himself fulfilling his destiny. And the way that was all communicated was just so great. There is just so much of this film that is grounded, brutal, and shocking. And at the same time, it's an exploration of like Viking mythology and religion. It's such a part of this story. They take the character's arcs in directions you don't expect. What makes me interested in this protagonist's journey was just how they told the story. We got to see him as a boy, lose his innocence, and then over the course of the film, he becomes like a murderer. I guess since this movie's been out for a little while, I don't mind spoiling this really minor thing. Uh, so if you don't want to hear it, go on to the next part of this review. This is the last thing I want to mention. So minor spoiler, I guess there's a scene where Alexander Skarsgård character kills a, a kid. I won't say too much aside from that. And just the way that violence was presented, you can tell how much stronger this man was than the kid. And I feel like that's something that a lot of movies would just not do correctly or not portray accurately. But the way he swings his sword, it is like a hot knife cutting through butter. He basically just cuts the kid down in one smooth motion with such little force. And that really highlighted just how much stronger he was than that person he was killing and how helpless that person he was killing was and i thought that was really effectively done it's just such a complex brutal awe-inspiring film in so many ways i highly recommend the northman i'm excited for robert eggers next film i'd give the northman a 9 out of 10 because it's not as good as the lighthouse to me another one of my favorite films from this year was everything everywhere all at once which is what people wanted me to talk about it's not my favorite film of the year it's definitely up there though and i think it's one of the most unique and original movies I've seen in a long time, even though it clearly has references to a ton of other movies like 2001 A Space Odyssey, obviously, and it feels kind of like a Stephen Chow film and it's absurd humor and whatever, but this movie really works. You know, I personally don't care much for the absurdist humor and I didn't really care much for Swiss Army Man, but I do think this film is better than Swiss Army Man. It's more accessible to me. It's funnier. I really like the characters and also the directors of this film, the Daniels went to Emerson College, which 
which is where I went. And I'm proud of the Daniels that they were maybe, you know, I'm proud of them that they were able to make a successful movie. You know, it can be obnoxious, I think, the kind of online reaction to this film, just because it's so overblown. I like this movie, but I do not think it's like the 10th greatest movie of all time. I don't think it's as good as Shawshank Redemption or like, I don't know, any other film I can list that I think is great. The Dark Knight, day I'm recording this, it's the 14th anniversary of The Dark Knight. This is a very engrossing film to watch, in my opinion. The cinematography and the editing is just really great in this movie. And like a lot of other movies I've seen recently, um, it has a very modest budget, I think. And there was apparently a very small VFX crew to work on this film, which I think consisted of the directors and a couple of other people. And the special effects are really great and seamless. One thing I've mentioned before is how whenever a character swaps into a different character in this film, it's usually just a sound effect and a performance, and it's completely engrossing in the film when you're watching it. And there's a lot of simple methods done with the special effects that I think make the story really engrossing and and work very well. Um, So many aspects of this film are also ambitious as hell, and yet it never really stumbles over itself. I mean, it does build to this emotional focal point that's so well done, and I can see how maybe some people would be like kind of confused and maybe overwhelmed about this like kind of story. I I think it's supposed to be overwhelming and I think that's kind of what makes the movie unique. I wasn't even thinking about the fact that I was watching a movie while watching it. I was just so entranced by the film. It's like hypnotizing just because there's so many things going on at once. And that being said, You know, I have some minor criticisms, which with certain aspects of the story, especially involving the daughter character and a girlfriend, which, you know, none of that stuff really resonated with me that much. And I do think it was a bit ham fisted at certain points. I just wish there was like more of an emotional resonance to that for me than there was to like the rest of the film, because there's so many parts of this film that I like really connected to. And I really enjoyed the narrative it was telling. Like something great about this film is I feel you can't really spoil it. I also think it's like a film that you can talk a lot about. There's like a lot of different ways to interpret it and different things to pick up on just because it is such a crazy movie and there's all this stuff going on but it is well done and it fits in this like multiverse story really well that it was trying to tell so yeah like i said it's emerson college culture personified i definitely wouldn't show this movie to my grandma uh it's just too much it's too complicated it has like this kind of style of a hong kong movie not just with like the action scenes but like the whole absurd tone it did remind me of a stephen chow film and this film tugs at your heart It tries to express some deep and personal things about the universe and if nothing matters in the universe Then then like what's the point of continuing love? I guess that's like the point of the movie or there's like this yin and yang thing going on and you know It's kind of impossible to summarize like it's just I've seen people call this film messy But the themes are not always what I gravitate towards in films necessarily I think even Tarantino has said he doesn't explicitly write themes into his films That's more something he looks into in his work afterwards in in retrospect. Um, So this movie does have a lot of things going on and a lot of different themes. Some you might latch on to more than others. It feels very purposefully designed in that way. There's going to be something that you're going to latch on to in this film because it's just tackling so much. And even though that might make it messy, that doesn't make it a bad film. That's actually the core of what makes everything everywhere all at once so unique. It's able to do so much in its two and a half hour runtime and it still manages to be mostly entertaining. Michelle Yeoh plays the title character and she probably had no idea what was going on the entire production because the story is so convoluted, but she played along and she had a lot of fun with this part. And I also uh, really enjoyed Yeoh's performance, you know, when seeing all the different versions of her and especially that scene where she's like overwhelmed by it. And it's very convincing that she just saw every version of her life in this scene. And it was a very hard scene to perform. And I think she did it really well. I don't have much of an issue with her performance, but the standout in the cast for me was James Hong and also uh, K.U. Kwan. Their performances were just so funny and expressive, especially K.U. Kwan. He was very animated, and I love that about the movie. Um, So yeah, it's very funny, lots of absurd, bizarre imagery, but it fit the narrative. You know, it's complex. It's going to mean different things to different people. To me, it's a film about the universe and our insignificance in the universe, because not only is the universe infinite, so is the multiverse. If you believe that concept, there are literally infinite versions of you. That's why the film is so purposeful overwhelming at times. These concepts should be hard to grasp for like a little human mind. Um, Not to call your mind little. I'm not 
trying to call you stupid. Seeing all these different versions of like Evelyn's character can make life feel pointless, but I find something emboldening about the mindset of the universe is so big, how can my choices ever matter? What if nothing does matter? I feel people are very hesitant to try new things and venture outside themselves, right? And if it is the case that nothing matters, then you really shouldn't be afraid to do anything. There are a million choices we could make every day that could alter our lives, and the human brain accustoms us to the predictable and the routine. We don't like trying new things, that's why people eat McDonald's. But maybe we should be trying new things, and because nothing does matter. And, and if we're successful in trying new things, we can not only make our lives better, but the people and the world around us can be better too. And this is the way I choose to view the film because it's one of the least nihilistic ways to interpret it. Truthfully, everyone has some amount of regret, uh, except me, obviously. I have absolutely no regrets. Uh, I made every choice in my life exactly correct. Um, but on the other hand, I wouldn't say what this film is saying is that your choices and your life don't matter. I'd say a major point this film makes constantly is that our choices aren't meaningless. Certain choices can radically alter the path of your life, as we see with Evelyn in this movie. Your choices can affect your life to the point where you realize you're somewhere you don't want to be in your life, and so you can make choices to make the life that you want for yourself before your choices lead you to a place where it's too late to change your life into the most ideal situation you want. You should be emboldened to take that leap and do what you really want to do, and if it doesn't work out, well, hey, don't sweat it. Nothing matters anyway. But if it does work out, you can live out the most ideal version of your life. There will still be problems and obstacles in your life either way. So you choose to live your life the way you want to live it, even if it means being a lesbian. <laughs> Hold up, man. Pass me the bowl. I'll admit I'm not a fan of absurdist movies in general, but for a general audience, it's good. It's very playful and crazy. I like the Ratatouille joke. I think they should have gotten Pan Oswald. I saw the Red Letter Media clip where they're like, Pan Oswald will do anything, obviously referencing Space Cop and watching the Red Letter Media video was a funny experience because I share a lot of the same exact thoughts as them and you know maybe they listen to my podcast or something. I was like mentioning very similar points like how the whole movie takes place in an IRS building and yet it feels very grand scale. You know it just means maybe I'm just getting good at critiquing movies or something. I don't know. Uh, the only film I've seen from the Daniels uh, before is Swiss Army Man. I didn't really like that film. Like I said I'm much more of a fan of this film I think it's funnier and more accessible. The emotional beats of the story really worked well for me, and that's because the film is so long, and I got to know these characters over this time, and the themes it's tackling are deep, and the Daniels managed to juggle all of these different things pretty well. The score for the film, which is by a band I think is really phenomenal called Sun Lux, I highly recommend checking their music out outside of this movie score. But that being said, I thought the score for this film was really great, and it's one of my favorite aspects of this film easily. I feel if this movie didn't have the score it did, it wouldn't work nearly as well. And the music style they have is just so distinct with abrupt silences and these loud bass sounds, and I'm used to listening to their music through my AirPods, and it's such a treat to be able to hear their music in a theater sound system that was truly special. So I would give this film an 8 or a 9 out of 10. It's probably a 9 out of 10, but personally probably closer to an 8. But I still really like this movie and I'll be sure to revisit it again one day, but not anytime soon because it's really long and draining. So thanks for watching. Those are the movies I like and that's all.